Mm. Everyone was being nice to my face. And I was reading about it, this stuff. I'm going, and half of it, I swear to God, on my kids' lives, it was like, I cannot believe this is one making the papers. I've got to believe there's, you know, you hear a lot of journalists use the word source. A source says. Mm-hmm. I would say, change that word for coward. A coward says. Not a source, because what do you mean a source says? They've either got an axe to grind with someone and they won't come and say it to your face, or they're just leaking stuff for their own agenda. I hate that. That's just so... But then, so, Paney, we had this conversation, and he goes, mate, I'm out of sleep. I said, mate, just be 100% honest with me. And I'm sitting there going, you're joking. Awesome. No worries. And some of the stuff he said is like, you'd imagine he was telling me to... It was like one out of ten, one out of a hundred. It was the easiest shit to change. I'm going, no, thanks, mate. This is, and it was like a gift. It was like a gift. And I've learned that in life. And people say, I oh, very intense. Don't don't mistake intensity with honesty. You know, Brene Brown. You know, the great Brene Brown, the Canadian. Um, now she's on this. You know, she um, researches fear and vulnerability. And one thing she says, it's a beautiful little podcast, and it goes for. Well, they said it goes for about 10 seconds. The lady says to her, what's the number one thing in leadership today? She goes, oh, that's easy. Be honest. Clear is kind. Unclear is unkind. So tell the truth. We try and think we're being nice or think we're being soft by it, and we're not clear. Be clear. Tim Payne was really clear with me. It was awesome. It was awesome. And like I'm clear... I, one thing I will always say, when people talk to me, they will never go to sleep at night wondering if it's the truth. And because it's clear, it's honest, it's kind. Tim Payne was honest with me. I thought, oh, Payne, I felt like jumping through the FaceTime and giving him a hug. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then this is the killer for me was that he gave me some feet. Then I rang Finchie. I said, Finchie, because I had this meeting that I said, Finchie, he goes, I said, mate, we've been captain and coach for four years. He goes, yeah. I know he goes, yeah, I've been a bit of a pussy, haven't I? I don't like confrontation. I said, what do you mean confrontation, mate? Just tell me. So he'd tell me. I'm going, oh, yeah, cool. And he's going, what, you're not upset? No, no, what do you mean upset? This is so fixable. This is easy, mate. And I've got a curious mind. Like, like I said, 63 in six hours of batting. At the end of my career, I was belting them. You evolve, you get better. That's life, right? So they give me this feedback. I said, no, and I spoke to Pat Cummins. And Pat Cummins said to me, Probably five times, oh, mate, this might be brutally honest. I said, Pat, there is nothing brutal about your feedback. What's brutal is I'm hearing it behind my back through the media or through sources. And everyone, no one's telling me. There's nothing brutal. Tell me. He told me, oh, no worries. Great, mate. The hardest thing for me of it all, I've never said this publicly, right, but I will see you guys will get some headlines probably. The hardest thing for me of all of it was I got the feedback. I did something about it. We won the T20 World Cup. We won the Ashes. We're number one in the world. I've never enjoyed coaching more. I still got sacked. That's the hardest thing. Because you can't give someone fee- ask to give someone feedback, do something. It'd be like, imagine me saying to a player, says to me, oh, coach, I wanna, I'm the best one-day player in the world. I'm the best test cricketer in the world. I want to get in the T20 side. Okay, what do I have to do? I'll give them some advice. And they say, oh, thanks so much, coach. I'm going to go and work on that. Does, works on it. We pick him, give him the opportunity. He gets five man of the matches in the in the first five games. Well done. Mm, actually, we're going to drop you anyway, mate, because we like someone better. Imagine saying that to a player. So why, well, why weren't you given the opportunity to get better? Why do you think? I did get I did get the advice and yep. I got better. I oh, know, but then sorry. Oh, sorry. Why, didn't, I, you, why didn't you Why didn't you get to keep oh, your job after getting better? You'd have to ask Cricket Australia that, mate. You'd have to ask. And the other thing is, you know, they used to talk about mutiny on deck. That's a classic. Like someone stole that from probably another podcast I did. One of my speakers. They say in leadership, the captain comes out one when the iceberg presents when there's crisis. Two, when there's stormy waters, or three, when there's mutiny on deck. What I've learned about mutiny on deck is that it's usually one or two voices, and they're the loudest voices, and people listen to loud voices. And when I finished with the Australian career, I, I would have got messages that make you cry from 90% of the players. 
So I don't know, mate. You'd have to ask someone else.